and based on who likes Captain America or who likes Iron Man, they would be shown different characters, different posters. Um, how? Alright. So, what is happening? A user comes to your site. You know what their favorite character is. Iron Man or Captain America. And based on that, you show them the correct poster. What do you need for this in Google? One, obviously two blocks. One that has the Iron Man poster and one that has the Captain America poster. You need a way to categorize a list of visitors into a particular category, which is called a set. Segmented personalization term. So segment is nothing but a category to which the user belongs. Here we create two segments, one for people who like Iron Man and one for people who like Captain America. And then finally we have to switch the content based on which segment the user belongs to. <laughs> Alright, so these are the modules that are explored and in the keynote, if you followed it, Judomi was mentioned which is the recent module and I'd love to get to it. But till then, yes. So smart content, this is available for Google 8. Pretty easy to configure. Personalization only available for Google 7, but it has amazing features. And of course, I've got it. Um, let's look at each one of these. So how will we do it in smart content module? Smart content module, what it does is it provides you blocks and you can add variations for that for those blocks based on segments. I will show you an example of this. So I have created a page called Adventures and Game, which you can see here. And I'm going to add a block here. Block layout. Connect. All right, so this is my block. Let's configure it. All right, this is how the smart block is configured. Variation one. Now, the problem with smart content is that if you want to create segments, you will have to write code. Let's look at what is available out of the box. So this is available out of the box. Or uh, whether the user is, what platform user is using, mobile or desktop, the language, operating system, cookies, local storage, and width and height, which is again, so viewport. So for this example, I use cookie. So I'm saying if, the cook, if a cookie named Marvel is set, and its value is Iron Man, then the Iron Man block should be displayed. I've added another variation which says that if a cookie called Marvel's value equals Captain America, then the Captain America block should be set. And we'll say this. Now, if we go to Page. Let's see how this works. This is movies, Avengers Endgame, and the block should have been here, which is not here because the cookie hasn't been set. Applications, let me set up a key. Marvel, let's set it as Captain America, and let's see what happens. We can't see Maybe. your incognito window. I'm so sorry, let me just share this again. Um, can you see my window now? Yes. Okay, great. So I set a boogie here called Captain America. And if you see the Captain America poster is shown you. If we change this cookie to say Iron Man and we remove the speech, we see the Iron Man poster. What is happening here? So, mm -hmm. a call is being made to decision.js, which is selecting the correct content to be displayed here based on the cookie. Almost all of the personalization modules work on a similar strategy. JS is plugged into the site, and then based on a certain criteria, it is replaced. So, Smart content works like this, which is pretty easy. No frills, easy to use module. Personalization, this is only available for Google 7. And, but the interesting thing is that it also has search-based personalization, which means that if you go to Google and you search for Iron Man, I can map this to my taxonomy term called Iron Man. And that would mean that you would belong to a segment that likes Iron Man. 
So what can be done is that I create two taxonomies. I create a taxonomy, say favorite character, and I will create two terms called Iron Man and Captain America. And then I will start tag tagging content with those terms. Also, I would say that if anyone search for, searches for say Iron Man or Tony Stark, it should be mapped to the taxonomy called Iron Man. And then whenever a user visits my page, they would see what I would know which category they belong to and then I can show them whatever they want. Personalization module out of the box provides geolocation based on where you're from. Uh, it also provides languages and it provides a recommendation block which we'll talk about later. And then Acrylift. So Acrylift has everything. It is more focused on say content creators. You do not need a lot of code to figure. Segments can be created right in the interface. They have a lot of options, and which is easier. So if you say, if you create a segment and you say that based on the favorite content of the user, so it will show you all the content keywords that can be used, which will be your taxonomy. So I can show this to you. Mm -hmm. Taxonomy, I've already created so characters, systems, Captain America, Iron Man, Wonder Woman. These are the taxonomy terms I've created for it to appear in Lyft. I have to add these to Content Hub. Content Hub is the yeah, Lyft's cloud content where all the content space. So what I have to do is entry configuration and if you see here that I have published these taxonomy terms, characters. The interesting thing is that if you've already created the terms and then you do this later, the terms will not appear. You'll have to resave it or you create the terms after you publish it to Content Hub. So I've published the characters to Content Hub and I've published, I created a block, custom block. Oh, which is called. So I created a custom block called Hero Banner, which I have then published to Content Hub. Hero Banner. So what I do is in my page here, oh, I just end game. Right here, all right. So here I have a default banner, which I put it here. And if you see, this is the default banner. In Acrylift, I've created a slot for this banner with the ID of the div. So all you have to do is tell them that this is the div that needs to be replaced and the content will be replaced there. And then I, I created two segments. I would love to show that to you, but my Left is not working right now. So I created two segments, which let's see. Segments. Yeah. So here I created segments, people who like Captain America and people who like Iron Man. So this is based on the taxonomy, the content that they most browse, which is that with which term it is tagged with. So if they browse content that is tagged with Captain America, they belong to this segment. If they browse content tagged with Iron Man, they belong to the other segment. Uh, and then we create a campaign. So there are a lot of campaigns on Aquilift. What I used was targeted personalization because I want to show a particular thing to a particular user. So I created a target personalization content. Two campaigns, one to show the Iron Man banner, one to show the Captain Man. Captain America banner based on our rules. Pretty easy to configure. And that is how you do it with three different modules. Uh, while smart content is very easy to use, and similarly, Aquilift is also easy to use. But for smart content, we have to write code to create segments. And that was probably the only drawback I can think of for at least this use case. What else can be done just like this? So, Page structure can also be configured just like this. Because the Netflix, I see this particular issue. So if I open my Netflix, yeah, I see a particular
your Alright. Yeah. So I see US TV serials, US TV shows, then I see watch together for older games, waiting US TV shows. When someone else opens Netflix, they see a different page structure. I don't know. So this is something that can be done similarly with all these three modules. Mm, let's try a different use case. Personalized recommendations. Um, whenever I watch anything on Netflix, it always recommends something else that is similar. And yeah, that's ours based on Netflix, but it works. So they show you shows based on previously watched content. 75 to 80% of all that is watched on Netflix comes from recommendations. I can vouch for that. How can we do this on Google? Let's see. So what happens is a user visits the site and you are shown a recommendation block based on your preference. Mm, what do we need? We need that content, lots of it, to know what the user likes. Then we need a view with filter based on tags. And then we need segments again. So segments are used to cook for personalization. Three things are needed. First content, second segments, and third rule. So similarly here we need segments and then a way to switch the tags based on user segments. Let's see how we can do this with the modules we talked about. Um, personalization module already has a suggested content block, which is great. So it will show you the content that the user would like most. They also have a function that retrieves all the notes so that you can display it however you like and wherever you like them. Um, so that's for Drupal 7 and we are talking about Drupal 9 or so. Aqualift, how can we do this? Again, Aqualift has a campaign called Content Recommendation Campaign. When you click on this campaign, you can select which keyword to use, which, con which content to show, and it is tagged with which keyword. So it's pretty intuitive. Uh, and then Smart Content Module. This is also, let me show this to you, I can do this structure. Let's try this block it out. Mm, somewhere I'll place a block. So let's say and smart block. Place. Mm, and variation. Let's say cookie and condition. And mm, again, let's use normal only. Or drop. If it's horror and reaction, I will show them. So I've already created a views blog, which is horror recommendations. So I will show them that. I will add another variation for the same thing. And cookie and condition. Horror, if it equals, let's say, romance. So we will show them those recommendations yeah okay uh and one of them we can set as default so that it is always shown and we just let the same block all right let's try this out Honor equals horror. 
instead of this block, which is wrong. So what I did not do, and I will show you, for the recommendations I have to click on select, and then it will, yes, perfect. I have added this now. I will add another one here with romance like we did. Romance and remove this, add reaction. Romance recommendation, select. Right, let's show five. Perfect. Now let's see it. Let's try now. So since I made the horror recommendation default, I'm seeing all the horror movies you might also like. But let's change this to romance. And it does work. Why? Wow. for horror and romance and then you have to switch those blocks which is a huge thing in my opinion because then you have to configure say you have thousands of categories that would take a whole lot of time what else we can do so we can also personalize search results um say the solar search results they can be based on they can be sorted on relevance based on the segment the user is from we can show personalized menus this for this, we have a module called Context Menu, but again, it is only available for Drupal 7. Personalized notifications. Personalized notifications can be done if we know what the user likes, which is again, recommendations. So once we know what recommendations to show and we have user profile available, we can send them notifications. This cannot be done with Smart Content Module because we do not create user profiles. However, personalization and Aqualet have user profiles, so once we know what the user likes and we have their data, we can send them notifications based on what they like. Mm -hmm. Let's quickly compare the modules. So we've discussed three modules, Smart Content, Personalization, and Aqualet. And Personalization is only available for D7. It's an amazing module, but it hasn't been voted. I would love to see it voted. Mm -hmm. Smart Content, if you want a small site, if you only have a few use cases, definitely use Smart Content. It is free. You can create segments, but you have to write code for that. Uh, user profiles are not stored. It cannot work across different sites because there is no central place where the user profile is stored. Also, a documentation is a little difficult to find. I could not find anything really. And we have to write extra code for that. As well as, on the other hand, Documentation is easily available, but then it costs a lot, so depends on what your use case is. More contra-personalization modules, so context context menu is available, which can be used to personalize menus. This can be great when you have like thousands of categories and a user would get lost trying to search for a particular category, so if you show them top 10 and then load more button, it makes great UX. Personalization, personalization views has a lot of things out of the box. One of the best modules for D7, I would say. Uh, personalize, personalize is a module that Aqualift is built on top of. So personalize is only for D7, but then Aqualift is also for D8. So the features are mostly similar. Browsing History Recommender recommends content to users based on the browsing history, which is all. The feature is also their personalization. 
but it would be great if this is there in Drupal 8. Mm, commerce recommended, recommended similar, it's like Amazon, similar products that you may like. Mm, for Drupal 8, we have Yonomi, which was discussed in detail in the keynote. And since it's a new module, I did not get the chance to explore it, but it looks very promising. Uh, Aqualift and then Smart Content. Yeah, that's a little screwed. We need more porting done. All right, so which module to use when? It depends on what you need. So right now I'm working on a site that uses personalization and it only has one use case, say what, you know, what kind of a spender the user is. So, you know, if they spend extravagantly or if they like conservative. So because it is just that one condition, it doesn't make sense to use like we are left with all its features. We created something custom for that, but we could also have used smart content. The only problem with smart content is that it can be used with paragraphs. And since we are building almost everything with paragraphs, that is, again, if you're personalizing Drupal 7, you should check out personalization module. It is the best module available. Aqualift is the only enterprise ready personalization solution available right now, apart from you know me, which I haven't really explored, so I am not in a position to comment on. But I use Aqualift and it is amazing how you can do everything without writing any code at all. So yeah, if you have lots of money, please use Aqualift. So there is one right strategy. You have to think what you want and then choose. Um, that's about it. And a huge thank you for all the maintainers of these modules. Because of this, we can do personalization and Drupal. Um, I'm open to questions. Okay, no questions. Interesting. I hope I wasn't talking to myself because I can't see any of it. <laughs> well, we, don't, we don't really have anybody in the room that's leading the, uh, the presentation today, so um, unless there are any more questions, thank you for your talk. That's all right. Thank you so much for listening and if you have any questions you know where to find me. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.